people come in here, they see the beauty of the building, they hear the beautiful music, they see the liturgy done well, and they know that we're taking church really seriously. There's something we found here that matters to us and that we're taking pride in. The cathedral was founded at the latter part of the 19th century when Phoenix was a very small town, basically cattle uh, and a sanitarium. This building was designed but not completed. And when they ran out of money, uh, what I'm told is a lot of the cowboys who worked down at the stockyards just decided to come up here and start building the cathedral. And there are stories about how they would gang the horses together to raise these giant roof beams up and lay them on top of things. In the 60s, like any other large city, the people began to move out of the city, they began to move out to the outer rim of the city. This congregation at its smallest, I'm told, had about 20 members and they were about to close the place down. When they started the rebuild, after that sort of moment of decision to keep the place going, um, they had experiences where you know, there would be knife fights in the parking lot and people would come in with bleeding wounds in just collapse in front of the choir while they were rehearsing. I do remember when the parking lot in the back where there is now a parking garage was just dirt lots. We had some old apartments back there, unfortunately, which were becoming um, houses, houses for drugs and a few things of that nature. But when it was finally de determined that, you know, something needs to happen to, to downtown, it needs to be this growth, which was happening in the um, early 90s to the mid-90s, then people started owning up to the properties. And one of the things that Trinity Cathedral did was that the great doors of the cathedral were open throughout the day. And at that time, you know, it was an older congregation, but downtown was also changing at that time. Uh, new apartments, new buildings, taller buildings, uh, an incentive for people to check out what is happening downtown. Say, there is a church on the corner of Roosevelt and Central that has worship, not only beautiful music. We've gone from about a Sunday attendance of 175 to a running around 420, 450 a Sunday right now in the past four years. I think our growth here at the cathedral has been in part because the people in the cathedral decided finally they were ready to grow. There's always people who are trying to join the community. The key is that the community has to allow them to join. And a lot of times that's not as easy as it seems. When I first got here, we saw a number of people come to the congregation and this congregation had gotten so emotionally tight. They really didn't have room to welcome new people in. And after reading a couple of letters of people who sort of were very hurt that they weren't able to join the congregation in a real way like they wanted to engage, people started to hear that, and I think the changes began to be made, which means creating new programs and allowing new people to run those programs. Uh, a major step for us was changing our worship schedule. We originally worshiped at eight and 10 when I first got here, and now we have eight, 9, 15, 10, 12, 30, and eight o'clock at night. We had gotten so big at the 10 o'clock service with an average attendance probably about 80% of the seating capacity of the cathedral, that if we didn't divide the congregation, we were gonna to top off and not grow anymore. In some ways, it's only as congregations are looking into the jaw of their own extinction and starting to realize if they don't find a way to take seriously the need to grow, that they're might be in danger of closing, that they're willing to do the hard work of welcoming people into the congregation in a real way, in an important way. All of us have a little flaw, something that just isn't quite right, and somehow we found ourselves in this place where there's finally community that we've been seeking. Like nobody's here. Thank you for bringing people here. Lectura del libro del Éxodo. Entonces el Señor le dijo a Moisés, anda. When I arrived here, we really didn't look at all like our neighborhood because we should have been balanced about half and half of Latino and Anglo. 
And I remember saying to somebody, you know, why don't we have a Spanish language service here at the cathedral? And we started two years ago, I guess it was now, with about 10 people. And that 10 people grew now to be about 300 people. We've been really helped by having Carmen Guerrero, who is a retired Latina priest, who is kind of a legend as a social justice activist within the Episcopal Church. And one of the things Carmen has impressed upon us is it's not just enough to speak Spanish, but it's important for us to be bicultural, to be able to understand what makes Latino culture tick and what makes Anglo culture tick. When I got here, one of the things that struck me and was unexpected for me was the deep divide between the Anglo and Latino culture. And so we've been looking for ways for the Latino community and the Anglo community to get to know each other. We have these regular fiestas, family barbecues. We have the mariachi who play for our Latino service will also play for the other services. We've started a children's choir and it's very intentionally biracial. Uh, we're hoping that as the children learn to sing together, it'll begin to make people see each other not as parts of different cultures or different congregations, but just as people that they share experience with. The makeup of the congregation is diverse. Um, we, we have um, still a good number of our older members who actually go back, you know, 20, 30, maybe even for 40 years. We have a mother who has adopted a young boy from Russia. And what, what I think is comfortable is that it's not a banner type diversity. We don't advertise it. And I think that makes people feel comfortable. The congregation becomes a social organization and a community organization as people are able to find small groups that they can plug into. The Quilters is really kind of our old-timey congregation. They're some of the people who've been here forever. They make those quilts as prayer blankets for people in the congregation when they're ill. They, the Quilters, enjoy the experience of being here on Saturday morning and just drinking coffee with one another. Choir is another one of our things that we have here at the cathedral. Many of them were professionally trained. They like being with one another and like singing with each other. The youth group, they're going up to the citywide uh, dodgeball tournament and there'll be a band and the team is going up. We're really working hard with our teenagers of trying to get them to recognize that they're part of something larger than the congregation that they're members of. And we want them to meet young Episcopalians from other churches in the city and other churches around the state. So they understand that there's something out there, something just like they've experienced growing up that they can go on to. In a large city, it's very hard to overcome the kind of anonymity of everyday existence. And the church gives people a place to find those smaller communities. We're inclusive, we have all kinds of people, Republicans, Democrats, homeless people, very wealthy people. They find their unity in the prayer book. They find their unity in common prayer. We are a traditional Episcopal church. We don't make up the service, and it is the church's liturgy. And part of the church's liturgy is to say, all are welcome. When they say the creeds, when they do the prayers, they are doing the same thing that has been done for centuries and centuries. And that's important. And that's how we can live out our uh, commission from our baptismal covenant to the world, that all are welcome. Growth is kind of paradoxical. I find that churches grow inversely proportional to the amount of control the clergy are willing to give up. And the more we treat the congregation as the primary ministers of the gospel in the world, the faster a congregation grows. Basically, our job is to equip them and get out of their way. They just figure out how to make this work. If the trees die for lack of water, then we're gonna plant a good cactus right there. And I think it's one of the keys to the success of this congregation.